Hare Krishna, my dear devotees, <clears throat> welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books, right here in the Haven, which is in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just a stone's throw from the English Channel. And Abhaya Das Brahmachari and I are residing in this little haven and trying to keep the Brihat Madanga beating so that the sound goes out to purify the atmosphere of a world which is, is troubled in so many ways. Srimad uh, <clears throat> Bhagavata Mahima Stotram We hope you're all well and safe and happy uh, in these troubled times and we're happy to bring this uh, daily readings of the Srimad Bhagavatam cover to cover with reflections from various uh, devotees from around the world. It's a beautiful uh, contribution and then <clears throat> archived on the YouTube channel for anyone who doesn't know. You can get all of these readings plus the reflections and comments uh, and that way you get to hear the Bhagavatam all the way through and at the same time get questions answered and also hear reflections from devotees uh, who are relishing uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam. <clears throat> this is the goal of Krishna consciousness, to relish Krishna, relish being with Krishna, relish chanting His holy names, relish hearing His holy pastimes, and especially the Srimad Bhagavatam and His holy instructions directly from Bhagavad Gita. Srimad Bhagavatam Mahima Stotram by Srila Sanatana Goswami glorifies the Srimad Bhagavatam uh, very beautifully for what it is. It goes like this. Sarva Shastrabdi Piyusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drikprada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures singular fruit of all the Vedas rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dwanduritaditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali, you are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshakshadayate Sarvadasava Sevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who were supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of Prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka bando matsangin, madguro mad mahadana, manisadaka mad bhagya, mad ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadhu sadhuta dayin. Atini chuchita kara Hanamuncha gadachin mam Premna rit kanta yokspuda O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly O exalter of the most fallen Please never leave me Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love Om namo bhagavate vasudivaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay, we've reached the 17th chapter of the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam Victory of Hiranyaksha over all the directions of the universe this is a big demon. Text 
Mm. Sri Maitreya said, The demigods, the inhabitants of the higher planets, were freed from all fear upon hearing the cause of the darkness explained by Brahma, who was born from Vishnu. Thus they all returned to their respective planets. Purport The demigods, who are denizens of higher planets, are also very much afraid of incidents such as the universes becoming dark. And so they consulted Brahma. This indicates that the quality of fear exists for every living entity in the material world. The four principal activities of material existence are eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. The fear element exists also in the demigods. On every planet, even in the higher planetary systems, including the moon and the sun, as well as on this earth, the same principles of animal life exist. Otherwise, why are the demigods also afraid of the darkness? The difference between the demigods and ordinary human beings is that the demigods approach authority, whereas the inhabitants of this earth defy authority. If people would only approach the authority, then every adverse condition in this universe could be rectified. Arjuna was also disturbed on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, but he approached the authority, Krishna, and his problem was solved. The conclusive inst instruction of this incident is that we may be disturbed by some material condition, but if we approach the authority who can actually explain the matter, then our problem is solved. The demigods approached Brahma for the meaning of the disturbance, and after hearing from him, they were satisfied and returned home peacefully. Text 2 The virtuous lady Diti had been very apprehensive of trouble to the gods from the children in her womb, and her husband predicted the same. She brought forth twin sons after a full hundred years of pregnancy. Text 3 On the birth of the two demons, there were many natural disturbances, all very fearful and wonderful in the heavenly planets, the earthly planets, and in between them. Text 4 There were earthquakes along the mountains of the earth, on the earth and it appeared that there was fire everywhere. Many aus inauspicious planets like Saturn appeared along with comets, meteors and thunderbolts. Purport When natural disturbances occur on a planet one should understand that a demon must have taken birth there. In the present age, the number of demoniac people is increasing. Therefore, natural disturbances are also increasing. There is no doubt about this, as we can understand from the statements of Srimad Bhagavatam. Text 5 Their blue winds, which were most uninviting to the touch, hissing again and again, and uprooting gigantic trees. They had storms for their armies and clouds of dust for their ensigns. Purport When there are natural disturbances like blowing cyclones, too much heat or snowfall, and uprooting of trees by hurricanes, it is to be understood that the demoniac population is increasing and so the natural disturbance is also taking place. There are many countries on the globe, even at the present moment, where all these disturbances are current. This is true all over the world. There is insufficient sunshine, and there are always clouds in the sky, snowfall, and severe cold. These assure that such places are inhabited by demoniac people 
who are accustomed to all kinds of forbidden, sinful activity. Text 6 The luminaries in the heavens were screened by masses of clouds in which lightning sometimes flashed as though laughing. Darkness reigned everywhere and nothing could be seen. Text 7 <clears throat> With the ocean, the ocean with its high waves wailed aloud as if stricken with sorrow and there was a commotion among the creatures inhabiting the ocean. The rivers and lakes were also agitated and, lotus, and lotuses withered. Text 8 Misty halos appeared around the sun and the moon during solar and lunar eclipses again and again. Claps of thunder were heard even without clouds and sounds like those of rattling chariots emerged from the mountain caves little different from Vrindavan. Text 9 In the interior of the villages, she-jackals yelled portentously, vomiting strong fire from their mouths, and jackals and owls also joined them with their cries. Text 10 Raising their necks, dogs cried here and there, now in the matter of singing and now of wailing. Text 11 O Vidura, the asses ran hither and thither in herds, striking the earth with their hard hooves and wildly, wildly braying. Purport Asses also feel very respectable as a race, and when they run in flocks hither and thither, in so-called jollity, it is understood to be a bad sign for human society. Text 12 Frightened by the braying of the asses, birds flew shrieking from their nests, while cattle in the cowsheds, as well as in the woods, passed dung and urine. Text, text 13 Cows, terrified, yielded blood in place of milk. Cows, clouds, rained pus. The images of the gods in the temples shed tears, and trees fell down without a blast of wind. Text 14 Ominous planets, such as Mars and Saturn, shone brighter and surpassed the auspicious ones, such as Mercury, Jupiter, and Venus as well as a number of lunar mansions. Taking seemingly retrograde courses, the planets came in conflict with one another. Purport The entire universe is moving under the three modes of material nature. Those living entities who are in goodness are called the pious species, pious lands, pious trees, and so on. It is similar with the planets also. Many planets are considered pious and others are considered impious. Saturn and Mars are considered impious. When the pious planets shine very brightly, it is an auspicious sign. But when the inauspicious planets shine very brightly, this is not a very good sign. Text 15 Marking these and many other omens of evil times, everyone but the four sage sons of Brahma, who were aware of the fall of Jai and Vijay and of their birth as deity sons, were seized with fear. They did not know the secrets of these portents and thought that the dissolution of the universe was at hand. Purport According to Bhagavad Gita, Seventh chapter, the laws of nature are so stringent that it is impossible for the living entity to surpass their enforcement. It is also explained that only those who are fully surrendered to Krishna in Krishna consciousness can be saved. We can learn from the description 
of the Srimad Bhagavatam that it is because of the birth of two great demons that there were so many natural disturbances. It is to be indirectly understood as previously described that when there there are constant disturbances on the earth, that is an omen that some demoniac people have been born or that the demoniac population has increased. In former days, there were only two demons, those born of Diti, yet there were so many disturbances. At the present day, especially in this age of Kali, these disturbances are always visible, which indicates that the demonic population has certainly increased. To check the increase of demoniac population, the Vedic civilization enacted so many rules and regulations of social life, the most important of which is the Garbhadana process for begetting good children. In the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna informed Krishna that if there is unwanted population, Varna Sankara, the entire world will appear to be hell. People who are very anxious for peace in the world, people are very anxious for peace in the world, but there are so many unwanted children born without the benefit of the Garbhadana ceremony, just like the demons born from Diti. Diti was so lusty that she forced her husband to copulate at a time which was inauspicious and therefore the demons were born to create disturbances. In having sex life to beget children, one should observe the process for begetting nice children. If each and every householder in every family observes the Vedic system, then there are nice children, not demons, and automatically there is peace in the world. If we do not follow regulations in life for social tranquility, we cannot expect peace. Rather, we will, have to go, we will have to undergo the stringent reactions of natural laws. Text 16 These two demons who appeared in ancient times soon began to exhibit uncommon bodily features. They had steel-like frames which began to grow just like two great mountains. Purport. There are two classes of men in the world. One is called the demon and the other is called the demigod. The demigods concern themselves with the spiritual upliftment of human society, whereas the demons are concerned with physical and material upliftment. The two demons born of Diti began to make their bodies as strong as iron frames, and they were so tall that they seemed to touch outer space. They were decorated with valuable ornaments, and they thought that this was success in life. Originally, it was planned that Jai and Vijay, the two doorkeepers of Vaikuntha, were to take birth in, in this material world, where, by this curse of the sages, they were to play the part of always being angry with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As demoniac persons, they became so angry that they were not concerned with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but simply with physical comforts and physical upliftment. Text 17 <clears throat> their bodies became so tall that they seemed to kiss the sky with the crests of their gold crowns. They blocked the view of all directions <clears throat> and while walking shook the earth at every step. Their arms were adorned with brilliant bracelets and they stood as if covering the sun with their waists, which were bound with excellent and beautiful girdles. Purport In the demoniac way of civilization, people are interested in getting a body constructed in such a way that when they walk on the street, 
the, the earth will tremble, and when they stand, it will appear as if they cover the sun. And the vision of the four directions. If a race appears strong in body, their country is materially considered to be among the highly advanced na nations of the world. Text 18. Kashapa, Prajapati, the creator of the living entities, gave his twin sons their names. The one who was born first, he named Hiranyaksha, and the one who was first conceived by Diti, he named Hiranyakashipu. Purport. There is an authoritative Vedic literature called Pinda Siddhi, in which the scientific understanding of pregnancy is very nicely described. It is stated that when the male secretion enters the menstrual fl flux in the uterus in two successive drops, the mother develops two embryos in her womb, and she begins and she brings forth twins in the in a reverse order to that in which they were first conceived. The child conceived first is born later, and the one conceived later is brought forth first. The first child conceived in the womb lives behind the second child. So when birth takes place, the second child appears first, and the first child appears second. In this case, it is understood that Hiranyaksha, the second child conceived, was delivered first, whereas Hiranyakashipu, the child who was brought behind him, having been conceived first, was born second. Text 19 The elder child, Hiranyakashipu, was unafraid of death from anyone within the three worlds because he received a benediction from Lord Brahma. He was proud and puffed up due to this benediction and was able to bring all three planetary systems under his control. Purport As will be revealed in later chapters, Hiranyakashipu underwent severe austerity and penance to satisfy Brahma and thus received a benediction of immortality. Actually, it is impossible even for Lord Brahma to give anyone the benediction of becoming immortal. But indirectly, Hiranyakashipu received the benediction that no one within this material world would be able to kill him. In other words, because he originally came from the abode of Vaikuntha, he was not to be killed by anyone within this material world. The Lord desired to appear Himself to kill Him. One may be very proud of his material advancement in knowledge, but he cannot be immune to the four principles of material existence, namely birth, death, old age, and disease. It was the Lord's plan to teach people that even Hiranyakashipu, who was so powerful and strongly built, could not live more than his destined duration of life. One may become as strong and puffed up as Hiranyakashipu and bring under his control all the three worlds, but there is no possibility of continuing um, life eternally or keeping the conquered booty forever. So many emperors have ascended to power and they are now lost in oblivion. That is the history of the world. And we have it going on right now today. Text 20 His younger brother, Hiranyaksha, was always ready to satisfy his elder brother by his activities. Hiranyaksha took a club on his shoulder and traveled all over the universe with fighting spirit just to satisfy Hiranyakashipu. Purport The demoniac spirit is to train all family members to exploit the resources of this universe for personal 
sense gratification. Whereas the godly spirit is to engage everything in the service of the Lord. Hiranyakashipu was himself very powerful and he made his younger brother, Hiranyaksha, powerful to assist him in fighting with everyone and lording it over material nature as long as possible. If possible, he wanted to rule the universe eternally. These are demonstrations of the spirit of the demoniac living entity. Text 21 Hiranyaksha's temper was difficult to control. He had anklets of gold tinkling about his feet. He was adorned with gigantic with a gigantic garland and he rested his huge mace on one of his shoulders. Text 22 His mental and bodily strength as well as the boon conferred upon him had made him proud. He feared death at the hands of no one and there was no checking him. The gods, therefore, were seized with fear at his very sight, and they hid themselves, even as snakes hide themselves for fear of Garuda. Purport The Asuras are generally strongly built, as described here, and therefore their mental condition is very sound, and their prowess is also extraordinary. Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu, having received the boon that they would not be killed by any other living entity within this universe, were almost immortal, and thus they were completely fearless. Text 23 not, On not finding Indra and the other demigods, they who had previously been intoxicated with power, the chief of the Daityas, seeing that they had all vanished before his might, roared loudly. 24. Text 24. After returning from the heavenly kingdom, the mighty demon, who was like an elephant in wrath for the sake of sport, dived into the, into the, into the deep ocean, which was roaring terribly. Text 25. On his entering the ocean, the aquatic, the aquatic animals who formed the host of Varuna were stricken with fear and ran, away, ran far away. Thus Hiranyaksha showed his splendor without dealing a blow. Purport Materialistic demons sometimes appear to be very powerful and are seen to establish their supremacy throughout the world. Here also it appears that Hiranyaksha, by his demoniac strength, actually established his supremacy throughout the universe. And the demigods were afraid of his uncommon power. Not only were the demigods in space afraid of the demons Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha, but so also were the aquatic animals within the sea. Text 26 Moving about in the ocean for many, many years, the mighty Hiranyaksha smote the gigantic wind-tossed waves again and again with his iron mace <clears throat> and reached Vivavari, the capital of Varuna. Purport Varuna is supposed to be the predominating deity of the waters and his capital which is known as Vibhavari, is within the watery kingdom. Text 21 Vibhavari is the home of Varuna, the lord of the aquatic creatures and guardian of the lower regions of the universe, where the demons generally reside. There Hiranyaksha fell at Varuna's feet like a low-born man, and to make fun of him, he said with a smile, Give me battle, O Supreme Lord. Purport The demoniac person 
always challenges others and tries to occupy others' property by force. Here these symptoms are fully displayed by Hiranyaksha, who begged war from a person who had no desire to fight. Text 28 You are the guardian of an entire sphere and a ruler of wide fame. Having crushed the might of arrogant and conceited warriors and having conquered all the daityas and dhanavas in the world, you once performed a rajasuya sacrifice to the Lord. 29. Thus mocked by an enemy whose vanity knew no bounds, the worshipable Lord of the waters waxed angry, but by dint of his reason, he managed to curb the anger that had sprung up in him, and he replied, O oh dear one, we have now desisted from, war from warfare, having grown too old to combat. Purport As we see, warmongering materialists always create fighting without reason. Sound familiar? You are so skilled in war that I do not see anyone, that I do not see anyone else but the most ancient person, Lord Vishnu, who can give satisfaction in battle to you. Therefore, O chief of the Asuras, approach him, whom even heroes like you mention with praise. Purport Aggressive, materialistic warriors are actually punished by the Supreme Lord for their policy of unnecessarily disturbing world peace. Therefore, Varuna advised Hiranyaksha that the right course to satisfy his fighting spirit would be to seek a fight with Vishnu. Text 31 Varuna continued, On reaching him, you will be rid of your pride at once and will lie down in the field of battle surrounded by dogs for eternal sleep. It is in order to exterminate wicked fellows like you and to show his grace unto the virtuous that he assumes his various incarnations like Varaha. Purport Asuras do not know that their bodies consist of the five elements of material nature and that when they fall they become objects of pastimes for dogs and vultures. Varuna advised Hiranyaksha to meet Vishnu in his boar incarnation so that his hankering for aggressive war would be satisfied and his powerful body would be vanquished. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the third canto, 17th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Victory of Hiranyaksha over all the directions of the universe. All glories to Varuna for calling the bluff of Hiranyaksha. Hare Krishna. Okay, it's 8 o'clock, or almost 8 o'clock. I'm going to stop here. Our readings, more than a half hour. It's a little more than a half hour. And we're going to listen to the reflections of the assembled sages. Hare Krishna. This evening is from Rati Manjari. Hare Krishna Rati. She says, Jai Guru Maharaj, the nectar vaults are opening. Yes, and let it flow. And from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Yes, Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, and all assembled sages, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. 
Thank you, dear Maharaj, for your daily reading service of Srimad Bhagavatam. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Jai Ho, Maharaj. All glories to His Divine Grace. He worked so hard to write these books. He got up in the middle of the night. He would sleep only two hours at night and he would take another hour or two hours nap during the day. And he, at night when everyone else was sleeping, he was composing, translating these verses and composing these purports. So we have not only an obligation and a duty to read them carefully like we're doing, very, very carefully, verse by verse, purport by purport, cover to cover, but also to try to understand them, to make an effort. We're not scholars, none of us in the material world now, maybe a few, but very few, but we can hear and we can appreciate and we can try to understand and we can explain them to others. And that's what pure bhakti yoga is all about. Hare Krishna. From Bhakti Christopher. Yes, Bhakti Christopher. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. All glories to His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much, Bhakti Christopher. And from Katie Romaya. Great Katie Romaya, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Jai Prabhupada. And from Bhakti Noel. Hare Krishna Bhakti Noel. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I appreciated hearing today that various disturbances will occur, as that is the nature of Maya and Kali Yuga. However, taking shelter in Krishna can give us safety from these calamities. If demigods are frightened, what to speak of how frightened we may become? An important reminder that only by being fully surrendered, regulated, and not puffed up May we not undergo such terrible disturbances. And if these disturbances do occur, they are set there by Krishna so we may learn, reflect, and grow in our Krishna consciousness. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah, thank you for that very nice reflection, Bhakti Christopher. I think that a simple way of putting it is that we cannot avoid the disturbances, especially now in the Kali Yuga. There was just one big demon then, but now we have a whole bunch of little demons and they're attacking other countries unnecessarily and causing the flow of you know, natural resources that go around the earth by, by different uh, means uh, and causing a great disturbance all over the earth. But we don't have to be disturbed by them. The disturbances will be there and we may even be inconvenienced, as everyone in the world is, by what's going on. But we don't have to internally be in disturbed if we can keep ourselves Krishna conscious just by hearing the pastimes of the Lord. And we can see the very things that we're hearing going on in this, in the first part of the creation when Hiranyakachipu, the first demon, was born and was so powerful. He was making problems all over the universe, not just all on the earth. And yet now we even have small uh, people who are thinking that they're, they want to control others and control more and more parts of the earth. And they will be lost in the waves of oblivion of time, every time. So they're, they're doing all of this for nothing except to disturb people. They get pleasure out of seeing other people disturbed and suffering. So we not, may not be able to kill them now. This is a different age, a different time. But we can keep ourselves undisturbed by hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam every day together. Hare Krishna. From Audrey? Yes, Audrey. She says, Hare Krishna. 
Hare Krishna. Om Shama Ananda Murti Devi Dasi. Yes, Ananda Murti. Dear Guru Maharaj and all assembled devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for today's readings of the most, most authorized Srimad Bhagavatam. Thank you very much. Today I heard that because Hiranyakashipu got benedictions from Lord Brahma to be immortal, that is why they are very much puffed up. So I thought I will be careful to be puffed up when I get some material things. <laughs> Yesterday, two Bhagavad Gita, three small books distributed after duty. All of them received books very nicely. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. He was planting the seeds, planting the seeds. The garden will grow and eventually be a very nice group of devotees there in Osaka. By this, by this activity. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada is surely pleased with you. And from Daitari Hari. Daitari Hari Hari Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thanks for tonight's reading. The point we heard tonight that one may become as powerful as Hiranyaksha and conquer the three worlds, but that there's never any question of keeping anything one gains eternally. I am beginning to appreciate the fact that Prabhupada explains the material conception of life as madness. It is madness that people try to exploit things for selfish short-term purposes without any desire to see the broader picture which seems so easy to understand. Thank you so much. And this is from Saleen. Hare Krishna, Saleen. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you so much for helping us on this path through your daily readings. Such an inspiring end of the day. Today's verses brought us back to the harshness of this reality, the material world. In the purport of text 19, it was beautifully said, quote, So many emperors have ascended to power, and they are now lost in oblivion. Mm. That is the history of the world. Unquote. Mm. Much gratefulness arises in the heart knowing that Sri the Prabhupada is continuously saving us from this oblivion, saving us from the endless wanderings through this infinite maze of the play of the elements. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. All, Thank glory. you, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Very nice reflection. Very nicely written, by the way. You should write your reflections. Hare Krishna. Inundate the magazines and news things of the world with your writing. Hare Krishna. And from Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to His Divine Grace. Hari Bol. I found tonight's description of the changing atmosphere in the universe quite graphic and thrilling, with interesting details, such as that the asses consider themselves a respectful race. Yes. I remember once when I was in Govardhan, a whole crowd of them came next door which is which at that time was a vacant lot and they started braying it was powerful it, it really shook you you know because there was a whole bunch of maybe eight or ten of them and they were braying and braying and they were you could just feel the their arrogance and their pride and the sound it was amazing i'd never seen anything like that before but here we we heard it you know described by Srila Prabhupada so graphically Yes, and it's going on now. Forest fires, hurricanes, tornadoes, war, pestilence, and, and pandemics. Food shortage. Water shortage. All a, resu a result of the, the birth of many, many demoniac persons, 
Because why? Because the root of the Varnashram culture is a good population. And that comes from the householders following the Garbhatsana Sankara, a sacrifice in which the conception of a child is sanctified. And the parents conceive the child not in wild passion, but with, with cool heads, trying to do something good for the world and for the service of the Lord. That is the basis of godly culture. And it's not going on. And therefore, so many demons are born, and therefore, the disturbances in the planet are growing and growing, just like the Bhagavatam predicts. So they're rather than thinking that it's just mythology. Look around, look through at the world through this knowledge, and you will see that it's all true. Every word of the Bhagavatam is true. And it points us in the direction away from demoniac activity and toward the devotional service, the pure devotional service of the Lord. That is the actual solution. So let us preach boldly and let us put this vibration out as it is without trying to water it down with conception that it will be easier for people to understand. We want to find the people who can understand and not fill up our movement with people who can understand. Hare Krishna. Ratha Manjari wrote, Srimad Bhagavatam is a transcendental looking glass through which we see the full spectrum of everything. Absolutely. Thank you, Rati. Nicely put. From Subarao, Raja Gopal. Yes, Subarao. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for your Nitya and Bhagavata Sevaya. Srila Prabhupada writes in 3.17.15, Quote, according to Bhagavad Gita, 7th chapter, the laws of nature are so stringent that it is impossible for the living entities to surpass their enforcement. It is also explained that only those who are fully surrendered to Krishna in Krishna consciousness can be saved. Unquote. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 7.14, Daivi Hesha Gunamai, Mama Maya Durat Yaya, this divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature is difficult to overcome, but those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. Thank you for your association and daily readings. Thank you very much for your comments, especially by using, by pointing out the Bhagavad Gita uh, verses that confirm your statements. This is Elevated Krishna Gata. Thank you so much. And more from Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. Another really good point that I found, the importance of going to authority to explain what is the cause of the disturbances. If only this would happen more often, there would be much less suffering. Another wha reason why we need to read and distribute these books. Absolutely. Absolutely. The people are without spiritual knowledge, completely without spiritual knowledge. They're in the deepest darkness, ignorance. Unless they get Srila Prabhupada's books, they will not be able to come out of ignorance. Therefore, Prabhupada stressed the distribution of his books. And we're doing it now. I'm older and I'm a little bit debilitated, so it's hard for me to go out myself on the street and distribute books. But I'm distributing the books like this, with the transcendental sound. And hopefully it will be left, you know, in the archives of the YouTube. Now we have...
Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Samabeda Bhakti Vrinda ki jai. Gaur Premanandi, Hari Hari Bo. See you tomorrow night, same time, same place, same topic. How Hiranyakashi, how Hiranyaksha is going to meet his match. Hare Krishna. See you tomorrow. Hari Bo.